Welcome. We're going to take a look at the UTV Starlink in motion antenna system. This is the flat antenna that can be roof mounted and that's the kit that we had and we've uh, got the uh, UTV kit. They are a little bit of money uh, but they're well worth it if you're heavily on the road for your disaster kit, uh, production companies, anything like that where you need to be able to fly it. Everything's in this box to get Wi-Fi up in the field. You can put the box together. We'll show you how we're going to put the antenna. The antenna will snap in on the top. It's got a special plate that's on the bottom of the antenna. It snaps into this. You can put this on the roof, provide it with 12 volts, and strap it down to the roof rack. And uh, you're in service at uh, at a at a higher speed in theory because the dish is bigger. And uh, depending what plans, if you put a commercial business plan on it with priority, uh, you definitely do get a higher speed and. Um, they work uh, very well. We've used it a few times over the past year or so that we've had it. Let's take a look what's inside. So it's it's a good uh, Pelican case. And um, what they've done is they've modified the, the Pelican case to fit this antenna specifically. And it, very nice job of doing it. Um, we pay full price for this, so we're not, we're not getting any... Uh, compensation out of them um, although we're always happy to talk about that uh, just to be able to get some of the products that we maybe can't afford to always buy everything and try everything but if we get our channel to the point where we can monetize it a bit and that that means you guys need to help us out by uh, clicking uh, clicking the like button hit the notifications and in particular subscribe so we can meet our requirements with our subscriptions and views. So the antenna, you know, you can see how it was sitting in here. Um, it's got a uh, 12 volt to 110 uh, inverter. Uh, I believe that's 500 watts. And um, it's got dual plugs in it, which is handy because we need two. We've got the standard router. And uh, the uh, power supply is bigger because th this thing takes more, you got more uh, power requirement because of the heating and it's a bigger array, so it is pulling more power. But everything here is secured. So they've got, uh, they have a cradle that the unit snaps into, so this is in here tight. And they, same thing here, it's got the cradle, it snaps into the cradle. This whole package right here can be taken out. There's two thumb screws in the corner, uh, one there, one there. You can undo the thumb screws and all that whole package, undo your straps, that whole package will come out and you can take this whole thing and set it up outside a building on another vehicle, whatever you want to do. So you've, you really have a lot of flexibility with this thing. Um, the uh, power, it's got 110. Uh, it's got a power port on the side. We'll show that later. And then it's got two uh, receptacles here that we can plug in. That can go right into a generator or something. And they're going to never ideally plug into power without a UPS in there. Protect your equipment, especially this guy. These are the $2,500 jobs. Um, you know, so you don't want to spike it. The... Uh, 12 volt comes in on the side here and without moving the camera always when you get it double check this 12 volt wiring because what we're doing and we carry an extra uh, ring terminal so we can hook it right onto a battery and extra cable if we have to we can butcher that and do some wiring on the field because you're not always going to be able to go to can't go to radio shack anymore anyway <laughs> Um, this, this is a cigarette lighter plug, uh, with the connector. Now, the way they're using their connectors here, you have to do a reverse of the color. So if you can see, 
the red wire here, I have taped it red, but it's connected to the black wire. That's so that when you bring this cable in and plug into it, the polarity red, red is hot. From here to the red terminal on the inverter, you want to make sure that's going through all the way, no matter what the colors are. Um, there's some other connectors you could put in there that are a little bit better that, you know, or might be less confusing. It works. Uh, this is, I would say, a Gen 1 version of this because we've had this for a while. Um, but that's your 12 volt that powers your inverter and uh, that'll power up the unit and you can plug that into a serrat lighter put it on a battery box uh, with solar panels and uh, we like the jackeries we've been using those for a year year and a half and uh, work really well we can monitor what's our voltage how much the battery's left and uh, what uh, uh, how many watts of power we are pulling so that's always nice to know especially when we're doing some tinkering so all we have to do with this that's the antenna connector that goes it's going to go into the back of um, the antenna and we need to get that out of the case we want to make sure we can keep the uh, case as watertight as possible I'm going to switch around and we'll come over on this side and you can see they give you the plug to fit in there and that plug's got a cut in it so we can open that up and we open the little cover on the side over here we're going to push our cable out and bring that out and uh, all we do is we take and open that up put the narrow side inward all right put the cable around it and now you can see that goes on but that does not close up completely but it will seal up better as you put it in but we're not we're not going to seal that up quite yet until we get our antenna on when we'll close that up gives you a relatively tight now if you use this on the roof of a vehicle always you want to put it the forward that way <laughs> Uh, so we don't you don't have rain moisture coming at you this way where all the connectors are we do have a, a 45 connector uh, jumper got taken out so we have the adapter over here uh, for the router and that gives us our 45 connection and that'll allow us to plug ethernet into to here yeah you have. okay so we're gonna take and close the case up and this you can notice it is a six latch case two of them three sides i'm just gonna push them down i'm not gonna lock them so you notice here is the release mechanism for this mount and uh, the dish when it comes in we're going to put it on and slide it put it in like that way and slide it this will lay in and it'll slide that way and lock this piece here is going to connect to that and that'll slide into that the end up the uh, end up here in the back okay so this piece is going to connect into that and the little rubber feet keep it stable so you're going to just lay that if you take it and push that back that'll hook into that but what you got to do is up here in the front let me go back down a little so you want to go back in here and you can look in there or you can feel it get it lined up and just give it a little hand nab and that is that's locked on okay so it's in place and the uh, antenna receptacle is right there for the female side we're going to bring our connector out and that just goes up into that and then our plug push it down a little bit more it 
get the plug and you can work the plug in into the side get it pushed in tight if you get that in nice and tight that gap in there getting it in with that gap but there it goes that does seal that crack up I put that crack on the side probably at a bit of a 45 down um, maybe around 60 degrees something like that if any water gets in hopefully it'll just drain off that way and uh, if you're in heavy rain you can't take a piece of thin plastic don't use anything that's uh, got any reflective to, reflectivity to it like a space blanket or anything like that although those are Mylar so I don't know how much they actually block anything but um, you could take a very light duty tarp or some plastic and lay over top of this if it's laying out on the ground so on the side we've got our antenna cables plugged in that's coming down in we got the plug in there and uh, that plug is a little bit hard uh, to get in and then power cable and uh, the hot is on the top positive and you just work that in and, and they go in pretty snug which is which is good that's what you want and then you got a cigarette lighter this cable and I'll see if I can put a link in for these or decent cable it's got a red red light on it and a fuse plug and uh, that if you want to run 110 that's your 110 volt standard plug goes in there 15 amp and then you've got the RJ45 and that's a weatherproof that cap screws off and ideally you can use a regular 45 connector cable going in there if you're going to have it out in the weather I would have some uh, oh do up like a 300 foot uh, cable with the weatherproof probably on both sides uh, on a spool a manual spool and uh, that'll serve you for most command posts and uh, applications where you can stick this outside you, you got your 330 foot limit so I always just like to pick 300 and um, that's usually going to fit most applications and always want to try and carry a variety of cables and if you don't need 300 you know have 150s uh, hand, hand uh, spooled if you need to so that's basically uh, the setup on it it's going to just lay flat it doesn't point it's uh, designed with the uh, phased array antenna system on it it's much bigger you can see how much larger uh, the area is so it's I won't say it's double because it's not but uh, it is significantly more than the articulated gen 2's and uh, more than the new standard uh, star links that are... alignments not as critical it does tweak it and give you your best bandwidth but even with this uh, these these are getting easily over 200s uh, laying flat if you have a nice nice open area um, now we do have a bracket and I'll uh, uh, see if I can get a couple shots of that if uh, the trucks available and this does fit on top of our uh, one uh, command uh, truck uh, we could snap it up onto a we have a plate a flat plate with these brackets on it uh, on roof racks on that truck and we can put this up on top and we've used that a few times on uh, deployments and it uh, works great you know it gives us gives us Wi-Fi and this is an in-motion system uh, so you can use this while you're driving This is the Starlink Premium in motion system. It's the larger antenna. It lays flat. It's mounted with a UTV mounting bracket and plate that's on a roof rack. It works really well on a vehicle. And uh, obviously, it's a lot less money than uh, these guys are. 
All right. But hopefully they'll keep the Gen 2s. I think there's still a market for that. The cost of uh, making those was reported to be around, uh, I think, around $2,000. So they're, they're eating that. These, uh, I don't think they decided to eat any of it. And, uh, but you look at what this can do compared to what we would spend uh, six, seven, eight years ago for a satellite uh, uh, VSAT, is what they call them and uh, it's very small aperture and those were the geostationary satellites and uh, those things you know fifteen twenty thousand dollars was common so we've come a long way uh, well worth the money uh, although i'll tell you right now you can do most anything you want with the standard if you're trying to run a major command post feeding multiple trailers or a hundred people uh, at a camp or something two of these load shared into a router and uh, feeding out on eight or ten uh, access points you you could do uh, excellent and I would always do two I would always do two of anything if you're doing like a camp or fixed location just in case one dies you've automatically got backup it's there and uh, Using two, you do load not not balancing, but load sharing. Uh, user one comes in, gets satellite one. User two comes in, gets satellite two, and then it just keeps going back and forth like that. And basically, you take your load and split it as close as possible to 50/50, and um, that helps reduce the overload uh, just on one satellite. And then, of course, you can load balance with other equipment and services. Uh, but these these are ideal for like a large FEMA camp or something like that. Check out our uh, Hurricane Ian uh, 2022 response, and you'll see how we use two of the articulated stand, uh, Gen 2s uh, to run a camp along with some FirstNet uh, and some 5G LTE services. And just a quick view. This is something I had... Uh, in here we're working on reconfiguring but uh, basically we got a cyber power UPS in here uh, TP link um, we're really liking the TP link we do a lot with uh, this is a TP link to mesh unit you could put four of these it's got four PoE ports you could put four of those run them hardwire <clears throat> and then mesh out off of that to extend it a little bit and these are remotely managed this is the switch um, and the uh, uh, basically the VPN for the management system is all in this box instead of having the other version they, they have separate boxes but, uh, this unit we can package with the uh, premium dish um, excuse me I try not to say dish they're not dishes anymore they're flat panel antennas um, so we can uh, package this with the premium flat panel flyaway kit uh, or any other combination of Gen 2s, Gen 3s. And uh, this will let us do uh, uh, two uh, WANs in through Ether, and then we can do two WAN or LANs on uh, the SFP uh, that are there for either fiber or you can put an Ethernet uh, RJ45. Uh, SFP in there and get two more Ethernet ports. Nice unit, great setup, and we can we can help you build this for your agency, you know, organization. If you need something put together, we can custom build something for you and <clears throat> help you out with that. Thank you. Please uh, click on that subscribe button and help us keep moving forward. Uh, comments and questions, you know where to put them. Thank you.